everybody, it's Dr. Rick uh, dropping in on you. Uh, another quick segment. Hope everything is going well. Real briefly, some things I need to riddle off, but I want to uh, talk to you ladies and guys. But I want to talk to you ladies. Come on, stop with the uh, the reels trying to guilt and embarrass guys into taking you places that you cannot afford to take yourselves. Uh, society and social media has gotten us so far off of the line of what it means to be in a courtship, to be in, uh, for a man to be in pursuit of something he desires and how that plays out and what sets the stage for what he is willing and isn't willing to do or what he's capable to do capable of doing and I see these reels where girls go with guys and I just find it real hard to believe I think some may be skits but I've seen it too much and I know for a fact in all of the content I see and all of the uh, research that I do that there is a collective mindset being developed and in, 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 in pushed an agenda of entitlement uh, without merit and these things that are superficial in nature and never really truly reflect character only bank accounts are what is at the forefront and then we are getting out there and I need to talk about that but before I do I need to remind you guys just in a couple more days we're going to be doing the Brothers Unfiltered all men event uh, this is where we're going to come together we're going to deal with the issues and the topics and the conversations uh, that we don't get to have that we're afraid of having that we are embarrassed to have about where we are as men, what we feel as men, all the things that we go through and don't want to talk about or don't have a space to talk about uh, because we feel we'll be viewed as weak. We're going to talk about this. We're going to create a space. We have created a space for you to decompress, which is really important for your mental health, really important for your physiological health, your longevity and quality of life. And I'm excited about it. Uh, I want to thank the people at the Sunrise Project for entrusting me with this particular uh, event and those that will come after it. Uh, it's a big thing. It's something I've been fighting for for years, something I've been writing, talking about, and lecturing for for years. And we are, we're, we're, we're seeing progress, slow progress, but we're seeing progress. So again, that. Also, if you like what you uh, see in here on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. And finally, if you believe in the work that we have been doing for three decades at the Odyssey Project, uh, everything from our research, uh, program development, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, uh, work with young women in domestic violence, childhood sexual abuse, uh, and so many other areas, we need your support. Look in the description box and give. Now, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Uh, one of my, I hate to call this young brother a mentee. He's more like a little brother to me. Uh, I don't know what he's little because he's definitely bigger than me. I don't know about bigger, but he's taller. Um, but this young brother, man, uh, came to talk to me and he really took an interest in what I was doing, but he came to me because he was looking for some guidance and I uh, willfully decided that I wanted him to be under my wing, not to hold him down, but to elevate him and to provide him cover. He's extraordinarily brilliant at what he does, uh, sharp. He's married, a provider, two beautiful young boys. Uh, but he also is, has this natural spirit to give. So he's been really watching my content and he's trying to find ways to really get me in a place where more people can see who I am and what I'm about. And the brother's a genius at it. He, he's a naturally a salesperson. He runs uh, a sales, sales division. And anyway, he sent this video, he said, hey, in between doing your uh, Masculine Monday things, you gotta start addressing these type of videos. And I'm looking at it, I'm going, man, I don't wanna talk about that, I don't wanna talk about that. But then I realized that the only way that I'm ever going to get in front of people that need to hear what I'm talking about is talk about the things they wanna talk about first. 
uh, I can't make somebody digest something they don't want to digest, but maybe if they get in the room, we can sort of negotiate or compromise on what's being served. So then I start looking at it going, we actually do need to talk about this. There's this growing number of reels that you're finding on TikTok, TikTok, Instagram, um, some on YouTube, but definitely on Facebook, where women are arriving at locations that men have chosen uh, anywhere from Cheesecake Factory, uh, Starbucks, whatever, and then going live to embarrass the guy and to talk about it. Now, some of it is this drive that social media has. Everybody wants likes. Everybody wants to get clicked. Everybody's validated by people they don't know who really don't care about them. They're validated by them clicking the like button. They're being driven in their behavior and, and, and how they respond to things based off of what they can get somebody else to do uh, to validate their behavior. And so they know that there's going to be a number of people who are going to come on. The women are going to come on and co-sign it crazily enough. Uh, you know, so what they're doing is basically, you, he brought me here. He thinks this is, this is what you think of me and blah, 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 blah. And the whole idea is missed. I have nothing against a nice dinner. Take it somewhere out. You know, you know, in Houston, we got Phil and Derek's. We've got Ruth Chris. We got, you know, these places that you can go and you can guarantee you probably spend 100 a person easily. Um, and I have no problem with doing that, but that's got to be somebody I care about. Somebody that has already shown me that they're worth investing in. I'm not, you know, this is not not going to be typically a first date with me. A first date isn't about the hoopla to me. The first date, uh, if I don't know you, and I'm not in that situation, by the way, I'm not in a first date with somebody that I completely am unaware of situation. But if I am in those times, my goal is to get you somewhere to where you can be comfortable, where you can be secure, where we can truly actually enjoy one another in a way we can have conversations. And it's not about the dressing. It's not about, man, look at look at the fanfare. Look, you know, I'm spending this on you. I'm big because now I'm selling you on accepting me, but I'm not really getting what I need to be seeing in you. And it's the fanfare. Look what's going on. And again, also ladies, let's let's just keep it real. never before in life because and because you followed the prompting of society and the system to commodify black men meaning that you undressed us down to our bank accounts and you defined us based on the number of zeros in those bank accounts we now are very well aware of what's in our bank accounts and what value it gives to us. And while some of us really don't care how we're being valued in a situation like that, we live to be the best we can be and we do. So many of us understand that any power, any influence, any movement that we get in this world is gonna be based on our uh, financial liquidity, our financial mobility, and what we can provide for a woman. And we are supposed to be providers. But the idea of providing and provision is security and sanctity, sanctity, not exorbitancy. That's a plus. The All the extras are a plus. The, the, the provision is about covering, giving you physical security, giving you emotional security, giving you financial security in the sense that you don't have to worry about losing nothing, nothing getting turned out, food on the table, clothes on your back, all these different things. All of this thing that I need a six-figure man with only 6% 6 of black men make six figures. And I can tell you as being one of those that six figures in today's society first and foremost don't get you as far as it used to even mid six figures now ain't nobody starving but it's it's not what you think it is 
And especially if we understand the dynamic of what's going on and we trying to build for a future. And that's what any man with any maturity is trying to do. He's trying to build a future. He's trying to make sure that his children's children's children are going to be okay because of decisions he made. We're not passing down the same debt. We're not passing down the same starting line. We're looking to build some things and do some things. And we need a woman on our side who sees that. We don't have a problem dressing you nice. We don't have a problem putting you in spaces. We, But what we want to do is also see that you see enough of, and care enough about what our vision is that you're not imploding the vision being selfish and again this isn't about a man not wanting to provide i'm all for provision i am big on provision but provision isn't simply money provision is everything that comes under the covering and we provide you with security we provide you with the right environment we provide you with a vision we provide you with leadership we provide you with uh the ability to learn we're supposed to be in a position to teach any woman we're with and that's why aligning with the right person is so important if i can't teach you nothing i can't lead you and then again back to this whole shaming thing my whole thing is because we've been commodified when we sit up and we look at what you're demanding of us we're sitting up and saying okay there's a fit if I, if I marry you and a person like me that's the only thing I'm looking for I'm not looking to play around I'm not looking to play date I'm not looking for a bed hopping experience I'm I'm only concerned with being married I'm looking for someone that I can make a wife my desire isn't to have a wife as much as it is to be a husband that's how strongly this means this stuff means to me that's my identity that's my space that's my place that's what I'm looking for so then I'm looking and saying okay how do you how, how do you create the opportunity for me outside of demanding something from me outside of needing me to come do X Y Z and I have no problem stepping in and filling my role but my role isn't that of a hero or a rest. my role is that of a partner my role is that of coming in and saying let's come together let's build something together my role is to sit up and say hey I see this is some things where you're weak I'm strong in those areas I'm gonna roll in I'm gonna sure that up for you you don't ever have to worry about that again but you gotta also look at me and say hey I'm your rib there's some things exposed in you that the rib is supposed to cover that's what the rib is the rib is the cup the cage and the covering that covers the vital organs of the body and you being that missing rib this is metaphorically speaking but drawing drawing some lines that we can relate to most of us you being the rib, you aren't just there for me to come fill. You're the rib. Come in inside of me. See, the the right woman isn't going to come in, see you in your weaknesses, and then expose your weaknesses to everybody in order to prop herself up and make herself look better. The right woman isn't going to come in and see your weaknesses and then tell you you're not worthy. The right woman to come in, see your strengths and say this brother's going somewhere this brother's doing some things i see his will i see his drive i see his focus i see he wakes up every day and he has a plan he's real he's real precise in what he's doing and, and then they'll turn around and say but i see he's slipping over here and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move in and i'm gonna cover that i'm gonna take my rib and i'm gonna move in and i'm gonna cover that opening right there until he gets everything situated and everything straight and he's simultaneously looking at you and he's sitting up and going hey she's got this she's got that but right now she needs to be safe she needs to know that nothing else is going to come into her life and harm her she needs to know that as long as i'm breathing she's safe she needs to know that if something she needs keyword needs that i'll go to the end of uh, I'll go to the end of the world and scorch earth to make sure she has it. No matter what it is I have to do to do it, I'm going to make sure she is provided for. Those are the things that come together. It isn't about just because you have a little something different between your legs doesn't qualify you for Phil and Derek's, doesn't qualify you for Ruth Chris. And again, I don't have any problem with it. What I'm saying is show me to the point. And, and see, just the fact that your mentality says that it's a good thing to embarrass a man or try to put a man on blast on social media to shame him in to doing something. You want one, the last person that I saw do it, shame the dude. Talking about, look at this dress I got on and you're bringing me to Starbucks, blah, 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 blah. 
And though he stood up and he said, really, we're doing this. We, this is how you're going to do. And he's tr he's calm. But you can tell he's bothered. And then he says, you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to take you home. And the crazy thing is she actually thought she was going to clown him. And he was going to change where he was taking her. And she was totally outdone because he was taking her home. She actually thought she could embarrass him, which again says you don't understand men. Men, you even if you make more money than me, you can't buy me because I'm not impressed with that. Because if I'm any kind of man, if I want it bad enough, I'm going to go out and get it myself. Even if you can afford to buy me something that I can't afford to buy myself. That's not going to impress me. That's not going to make me want you. That's not going to make me do things for you. Because if I want it bad enough, I'll go get it. And that's always been the case. I've always gone and gotten what I want. So you can't buy me no matter who you are, no matter where you're at in your life and how many, how, how independent you feel you are. That's not your way to me. The way to me is to touch me the way God designed me to be touched. The way you move a man is through edification. The way you move a man is through affirmation. You want a man to do something, tell him he did it well. You want a man to do something, tell him he's the best you've ever seen doing it. He's going to be better the next time you see him do it. That's what moves us. We want to be affirmed by the men, women we care about. Nothing like hearing it from a wife or a daughter. You, but, but you're so busy trying to push and control and, and pimp us that you're not getting that. We, we st there are men out there right now, black men out there, that want nothing more than to love a black woman. And I'm going to tell you from recent experiences, the softness of a woman just speaking, asking you what you need instead of, instead of demanding what they want. And I don't mean need in the sense of material things. I'm talking about, hey, what's going on with this? What's going on with that? How's this going? Do you want me to do this? Hey, I'm, 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 I'm sharing this with this person and let them know that all these di different things that can happen. That is what drives a man. Now that man will see the value in investing in you because you're already investing in him. Haven't spent a dime, but you're investing in him. You're talking to people who may be able to help him with his business plan. You're talking to people who may be able to support him in his next endeavor. You're talking to people who may have the answer to a... Uh, challenging enigma that he's dealing with that's what he's looking at okay now i see how we merge see it says the two shall become one flesh it doesn't say one comes in and does whatever the other one wants him to do and and and, and gets the standby no that's not what it is it's coming together it's one flesh it's one movement and all of this stuff and they convinced us that we were at odds they convinced us that 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 all we are as men is what we can put on the table oh it's important you gotta have something on the table you gotta you gotta first make sure there is a table and then you gotta put some stuff on the table and you gotta make sure that there's a roof over the table but at the same time the person that you're building this place for has to turn that into a home and that doesn't come with money that comes with her energy her softness her willingness to step in and move into you and prop you up when you get weary when you get weak when you get tired you're warring every day come on sisters you're being played and don't get on me about well, what about the men because I stay on the men. I stay on the men so hard that I'm always catching strays because they mad because they feel like I'm not I'm not giving y'all uh, any any work any smoke. Look, the bottom line is you got to have value to be invested in. And when you commodified black men, you made us more aware of what we were investing. We know now that if even if we get you to the point of marriage, there's a 50 percent chance that was going to end up in divorce. We also know mathematically that about 85 to 87 percent of marriages are initiated by women. So it's more likely you're going to be the one that leaves the relationship. We also know that about 90 percent of the women who initiate these divorces also leave with more than they came with. So literally the very thing that makes us value 
valuable, we could actually end up losing as much as half of it if we sit up and make the wrong move. So yeah, we're damn sure careful about what we're investing in. Money and otherwise. Time to get it together. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a whole lot of clap. The bottom line is, this is about getting it together. I stay on men about the stuff we need to do, about protecting women, about covering women, about being men and leading and guarding and holding one another accountable. So don't come on about the men. This is time we need to start looking and everybody's taking shots at Dr. Uh, Shahrazad Ali. Uh, because of her stance. It's old, that's antiquated. Yeah. And what you find is as you move away from what you call old and antiquated, which are the traditional values, interests, and principles of what kept us strong and what kept our households together, you're getting antinomianism and a completely uh, sect, uh, sect, uh, sectarian behavior in the fact that everybody's just doing what the hell they want to do. And they think it's okay that you actually think you can sustain a social structure without social compliance. I don't have to care about what nobody wants. I'm gonna do what I want. That doesn't let that doesn't work well. So you can literally look at when we moved away from those values that Dr. Ali is talking about and move to where we are now, it everything that we complain and whine about that's going on in the world came with it. You can't have this utopian world when you're not living a utopian mindset and carrying out utopian values, interests, and principles. You can't have this. There's so many things working against us. We can't be working against ourselves. That's it. On that note, I'm out of here. Take it how you take it. I love you guys. Remember, for my men, show up on Thursday. There's a link in the description box. Uh, find it, and we are going to uh, chop it up on a real heavy level on Thursday. It's an all male, black male event. Show up. Also for everyone else, if you believe in the work we're doing and what we're trying to build and what we're trying to do for our communities, def and what we've been doing for th over, over 30 years, over three decades, look in the description box and see how you can support our work and do so. On that note, I'm out of here, take it easy.